What is a badge worth to you? That's an important question because here we have the 2015 Audi A3, and unlike Audi's top tier A7 and A8 luxury sedans, this one's based on a Golf. And that means a lot of the stuff in this car can be had elsewhere for a lot less money. The A3 starts just under 30 grand, but trust me, you don't want that one. I drove it, and with a sluggish 1.8T engine, front wheel drive, cheap tires, and very few options, it's not very good at all. This is the one you buy your teenage daughter who just wants the badge and doesn't know any better, but I certainly wouldn't want to spend three or more years driving this. Then, there's the 2 liter turbo with Quattro, which I much prefer. It starts at just under 33,000, but you're going to want keyless go, navigation, automatic climate control, and some other toys to make it feel like a real Audi, and that brings the price of my test car to 40 grand even. If you want paddle shifters, that means you gotta get the S line, and then you're touching nearly 45 large. It's got 220 horsepower with 258 pounds of torque, and it's reasonably quick with the DSG transmission. It can hit 60 in 5.8 seconds, which is actually about the same as an E36 M3. In the real world, it makes nice mid-range torque, but feels really laggy off the line unless you brake boost it like you're at the drag strip. The nav system is good, with Google satellite images and street view to show your destination right before you arrive, so you know what to look for. But I'm not the biggest fan of the pop-up screen movement Audi's going for in all its cars, even if the screen is as thin as an iPhone. I will say that the $800 for the 14-speaker Bang & Olufsen stereo is money well spent. It's got a nice trunk, fold down rear seats, an open feeling cabin, and it gets good fuel economy. I beat on this car pretty hard all day and still got over 22 miles to the gallon. The cup holders are forward and nicely out of the way, the sunroof is big for a car of this size, and the seats are comfortable even though only the driver's side gets power. The steering wheel feels nice in your hands with decent feedback even without the paddle shifters which cost extra and that's quite frustrating since the lever goes the wrong way in manual mode. At least the gauge cluster, like all Audis, is very nice looking. The interior, if not the fanciest one Audi has ever made, does at least feel up to Audi quality. The suspension and chassis are composed over smooth roads with less understeer than I expected, but when the road gets bumpy, the back gets bouncy with too much spring and not enough damping. Not that it matters since the high school girls who buy these things will never notice. The brakes held up well to hard driving, over decent feel, and didn't catch on fire. On this particular press launch's orientation presentation, two topics were heavily discussed. I'd like to address them both. The first is design, and Audi went so far as to have the A3's incredibly talented designer, Danny Garand, live sketch an A3 for us. No one really mentioned that he actually sketched a beautiful mix of Alpha 164 and CTSV Coupe, and that in reality, for all the talk about design, the A3 looks exactly like a shrunken A4, which looks exactly like a shrunken A6. The second is technology. The press launch was like a science fair with every technology partner present eager to tell us about all the stuff the A3 can do. It's got a 4G hotspot, it can tweet for you, read your Facebook feed. You can find the car using your phone, send it a Google Maps multi-destination route, geotag your photos and get directions back to where they were taken. All kinds of stuff that they think millennials will want their car to do for them. Now, there may be someone out there who wants their car to read their Twitter feed for them. But you know what everyone wants? USB ports. Every portable device in the world has a USB port. A Ford Fiesta starts at 14 grand and has two of them. I've tested cars with four and trucks with six. How Audi has managed to ramble on and on about connectivity and technology and left such a glaring emission out of the, not just the A3, but out of all their cars is madness. If at this point it feels like I'm getting down on Audi, it's because I think they need to actually ask young people what they want their cars to do and provide that. 
Audi has some real competition from the BMW 2 Series, which looks brilliant and comes with rear drive and a ton more available horsepower, and the Mercedes CLA, which looks like a miniature version of a $100,000 CLS, not like a miniature version of a $50,000 A4. Which brings me back to our original question. How important is that badge? A Volkswagen GTI has the same powertrain and will drive better. A Fusion has more room, more power, and better design for less money. All of these options are better cars, but none of them allow you to say, I just bought a new Audi. The A3 isn't a bad car, it's just not a great value. And if it sells well, which it probably will, what does that say about us?